So in order to graph y equals cosine of x minus 90, first of all, make sure you wrote the equation down above your graph so that as you have this graph to look back at later, you remember what graph with, went with which equation. And so whenever I make one of these graphs, you know I like to start by drawing in the midline, which because this one's not moved up or down at all, is going to be at zero. And this one's also not stretched at all. And since it's not stretched, it's going to be going up one and down one to get to the maximum and minimum lines. Now I like to draw those in partly because it just helps to keep track of things and partly because it's going to be actually really useful as we start getting more complicated later. All right, from here, I'm graphing cosine. Cosine, remember, starts at the top, but notice where the top is in this case. Because we move this right 90, I started here, and I actually moved it over to the right 90 for my first point. So as I think about my pattern of cosine, remember it goes top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, and so on and so forth. That's the top. So now I can just follow the pattern from there. So notice from the top point that I plotted first, I go middle, bottom, middle. Then I run out of grid on the right-hand side. We go ahead and follow that same pattern on the left-hand side. So notice here I am at the top. And so as I head to the left, it's then got to be middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, and so on, heading to the left as well. So that we end up with that nice, smooth curve that we're used to seeing. Go ahead and make sure you have this graph solid and correct on your paper. Write this equation now above your next graphing grid. Y equals sine of x. And so you notice what's making this graph different today from the stuff we've done previously. All of the graphs that we have graphed on paper so far have all been cosine. This one is sine. And while our graph is going to be similar, it's going to be slightly different. To know what our graph should look like, I'm going back to my unit circle picture. And so in our unit circle picture here, we want to figure out which of these values are sine. Well, is sine my x coordinate or my y coordinate? Is the y coordinate, yes. And so as I look at this big picture here, all of these y values out here are my sine values. So that as I graph sine, I'm really graphing those values with the angles. Specifically, I'm going to be interested in these values. I'm going to be interested in those highlighted values that are at the 90 degree intervals. Because it's going to be very similar to cosine where it went top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. We're going to be able to relate everything to top, middle, and bottom. And so these are going to give me those top, middle, and bottom numbers. So have that still out in front of you because we're going to be using it to now graph sine of x. So first step, what is sine of 0? And so, yes, we find that sine of 0 is 0 from our unit circle picture. I'm next going to go to 90. So I look at my unit circle picture, go up to 90 degrees. What is the value of sine at 90? 1. 1. And so I plot the point at 90, 1. Next up, 180. What is sine of 180? It is... Zero. We're looking at the y coordinate, remember? Are we looking at the y coordinate? Next up, 270. What's the sign of 270? Negative one. Negative one. Excellent. And 360. Well, we, we don't actually have 360 labeled as an angle on our unit circle picture, but we can still know where it is because 360 degrees is the same as what other angle? Zero. Zero. Yes. And so, sine of 360 is the same as the sine of 0 degrees was, which we found was 0. Now, you'll notice that this one follows a very similar pattern to what cosine did. It's ever so slightly different, because cosine went top, middle, bottom, middle, top. This one goes middle, top, 
middle, bottom, middle. Uh, in some ways, it's really the same pattern. We're going to see that going forward. But it is slightly tweaked here, and we need to think about what the next point looks like over here at negative 90. Because there will usually be a little bit of difference of opinion about where it should go, about whether it should go to the top or to the bottom. And the key is actually kind of envisioning our graph, envisioning our wave. Because it's going to keep doing the same wave. Our wave does not bounce here. So it doesn't do something like that. It keeps following the same pattern. So you notice that because it keeps following the same pattern, as I go to the left, it's going to have to go down. It's going to have to go to the bottom there. And once I know that, well, then I can go ahead and fill in the rest of the points headed off to the left there by just following that same pattern. And then I'll tell you up front, the curve looks the same as cosine and how we draw it. It's just a matter of where the points are. So go ahead and draw the curve in that same wave shape through those points. Now, as you take a look at this graph and the graph that we made at the start of class, compare those two graphs. What do you notice? Now, as you compare those graphs that we made, that first graph that we made today was cosine of x minus 90. Remember? That graph actually looked just like this one. The only difference is that when we made that, we put our first point here, and then we filled in the points from there. But it still gave us all the same points. When we graph sine, we started here, and then plotted our points. The graph of y equals sine of x actually is the exact same graph as y equals cosine of x minus 90. They aren't just close to each other. They aren't just related. They are actually the exact same graph. Because sine and cosine are so closely related to what they do in a circle, they're giving us x and y coordinates. The graphs have so much similarity as well. And so if you know how to graph cosine, learning how to graph sine is actually going to be just one small step more. And so then we got these notes that summarize what we were talking about there. And yes, make sure you have all these down. Now notice the big things out of this is that cosine is going to start at the top of the wave. We saw that pattern with cosine earlier, and we've talked about it for a couple of days, where cosine goes top middle, bottom, middle, top, etc. Sine is the same idea, except, except sine starts at the midline. So it starts in the middle, and notice it says increasing, which means from the middle, it goes to the top. And so that's where we fall into our pattern then. So it goes middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, and so on and so forth, all the way through. For either graph, and this is going to be a reminder that all of a sudden today starts being a bigger deal. I've been talking about it here and there, but we haven't really had to in order to be successful. Today you will. Whenever making these graphs, we're going to start by drawing in the dotted lines for the midline. Always draw in the midline first. And then the top and the bottom lines, or in other words, the maximum and the minimum. That is going to help you as we get into more complicated equations. This is the most complicated general form that you will see for graphing sine or cosine. Side note, I could have written cosine here. Everything would still be the same. Same idea. So also add this to your notes, and then we're going to use it to graph stuff where we're changing both the amplitude and the midline at the same time. All right, and so we see in these notes a little bit of detail. As we start looking at our graphs, the midline always comes from however far we moved it up or down. Because remember the number that's added on the end, that's how far it moves up or down. So that means that I would start by drawing in the midline. And that's wherever the midline is, is I draw that first line there. But then, from there I go ahead and I draw in the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance to the top line and to the bottom line. So basically it's this distance between them is the amplitude. So like let's say your amplitude was 5. 
That means the distance from our midline here to the top would be 5, and the distance from the midline to the bottom would also be 5. So that's why we draw the midline first, and then we worry about the amplitude. Mm -hmm. One little side note here. I didn't label what the H does. That's just a horizontal shift. It just moves it sideways, because it's in with x. Anytime we add or subtract x, it moves it sideways. But it has no special name like the a and the v do in this case. All right, we're now going to practice it with this graph. So please write this equation down above your next graphing grid, and then we're going to graph it together. All right, now when we go to graph this, the first thing I want to figure is exactly where is the midline and exactly what's the amplitude. Now which number here represents the midline? Yeah, our midline here is at negative 3 because it's always whatever number is added or subtracted onto the end. Now, I'm going to give you one other little detail. When you're asked what is the midline, the number that we're interested in is negative 3 but technically the midline actually is a line. So I'm going to get math teacher technical a little bit and specify that, okay, technically we'll write y equals negative 3. All right, now that I have the midline and know where that is, what's the amplitude going to be? Two. Yep, amplitude is our vertical stretch. So that's whatever is multiplied out front. So yes, my amplitude here, it is going to be 2. So step one, draw in the midline. Notice I drew it down where y equaled negative 3. And then I need to draw in the other two lines, the maximum and the minimum. How far up do I go to get to the maximum? 2, because that's what the amplitude means. How far down do I go to get to the minimum? 2, because that's what amplitude means. And so then I've now drawn in the top, the middle, and the bottom by first drawing in the midline, and then going up and down by the amplitude. Now that we've drawn in those three dotted lines, I now can worry about how to graph sine. Where does sine start again, top, middle, or bottom? Top. It does not start at the top, no. That was cosine. Sine in the middle. That's in those notes that we took. And back in those notes that told us that sine starts in the middle, we, remember we noted that sine starts in the middle increasing. So when it's at the middle here, I know that it's currently increasing as it passes through. So where would my next point be? Would it be at the top, the middle, or the bottom? It has to be at the top, yes. And so I plot my next point at the top. And if you know those two points... Because of all the work we've done with cosine already, you're used to the pattern from here. Because after top comes middle, and then bottom, and then middle. We do that exact same pattern that we've been doing. It's just I'm starting in the middle and going to the top instead of just starting at the top, like we would with cosine. Now, on the left-hand side, I continue the pattern. Remember... I'm not just copying it on the left-hand side. It does not come down and then bounce back up. There is no bounce like that ever from the midline. It never happens that way. It always is going down and continues going down until it hits the bottom. And if I know that, I can then fill in the rest of those points on the left-hand side. And once I've filled in all of those points, I can go ahead and draw the curve that goes through them, and I have my graph. Notice this one actually really needed us to draw on those dotted lines. If you had tried doing this graph without drawing in the top, middle, and bottom dotted lines, this time, for the first time, it probably would have given you some trouble, and we would have had some errors in there. Yeah. So that's why we got to draw those in at the start. 